In this series of cell biology lecture, we are going to review the techniques for studying secretory vesicle pathways. So this is incorporated into the cell biology playlist. So we often say that proteins are trafficked through the anterograde pathway. They move from endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi, then ER, then maybe some, some proteins are secreted, some proteins are displayed on the membrane. So how does that exactly happen and how to study that? So after transcription of RNA, so the ER bound ribosome would lead to the production of the protein. So the newly synthesized protein entered the endoplasmic reticulum using the translocon channels. And in a dip different video, we talked about that. Eventually, then the anterograde transport takes this protein away from the ER move it through the Golgi and eventually through the Golgi network, it uh, buds out and eventually be secreted or be displayed on the membrane. So now we clearly understand there is a sequence. It initially gets into the ER, fold gets folded into the ER, quality control happens in the ER, it gets sorted into the Golgi, modified also and eventually secreted. So all this sequence of event that is very clear to us and always depicted in the textbook was not clear 50 years ago. And this story is about that. So how do we know this sequential process occurs? And thanks to the effort of George Emil Palladi and his seminal work at Rockefeller Institute had literally revealed the mystery of vesicular trafficking and the sequence of vesicular trafficking. This is one of his Nobel winning work where a, ham where a guinea pig pancreas was used to demonstrate that how exocrine pancreatic cell uh, basically traffic vesicles uh, containing digestive enzymes. And uh, he came up with this kind of rough schematic where you can see the numbers depict the sequence of event in terms of secreting of these digestive enzymes. And this was, this was published in 1981 in JBC, JCB. So what he did was in series of experiments, their group basically radio labeled amino acid and then injected it to the pancreas of a uh, guinea pig. Now they were studying the pancreatic acinar cell for a reason because these acinar cell produce a huge amount of digestive enzymes. So whenever you uh, pulse it with a radio labeled amino acid, newly synthesized protein would be pulse labeled. They would incorporate those radioactively uh, labeled amino acids and now they become trackable. Remember, the time at which Pallade did all these experiments was the time of radioactivity. So everybody was literally using radioactivity to understand mysteries of life. So in that point of time, what they really did is basically providing a pulse and followed by a chase. So at different time points like T1, T2, T3 and Tn, they would take out the pancreas, grind it up because that's the age of biochemistry as well. Then ultracentrifugation would literally lead to cell fractionation. Different fraction of the cell would be produced. Now the question that they ask is that which fraction one can see the radioactivity. So in different time point, if radioactivity appears in different location in the cell, one can clearly understand the pathway of movement of these labeled protein through the cellular organelles, right? That's what Pallade did. And roughly it looks like this. Initially it was in endoplasmic reticulum, then moved to Golgi. Later on, eventually it would be in the membrane fraction, if it's a membrane protein though. So obviously this sequence of event can be understood from these experiment. So two things were crucial to understand these things. One is the way of labeling the protein. They understood pulse labeling is possible with these radio labeled amino acids. And second is basically the way to investigate the cellular compartments because looking at the details at that ultrastructural level was not good enough. So they investigated this biochemical approach to look at the uh, cellular subcompartments. Now, obviously, many of these findings are later on validated by the beautiful electron microscopy study by George Pallade because he was a trained electron microscopist. Anyway, these days we can do it with the help of fluorescence. Imagine you have a cultured cell line and in that you use an expression vector where a, a VSV protein, which is present in the virus, which is basically a virus surface glycoprotein is tagged with a GFP. So in this fusion protein, 
GFP would make it more trackable and traceable. Generally, this particular protein is found as a membrane gly glycoprotein, so it would be displayed on the membrane and one can literally track its movement through the organelles to understand the sequence of events. Moral of the story, by putting it GFP, people make it trackable. What is the experimental goal? Where does VSVG goes after its synthesis? So tracking it over time is the goal. That is why live imaging should be appropriate in this case. And exactly live imaging was done in these contexts. And this was the result obtained and modified from Jennifer Lipton Schwartz. So in this case, one can see in three different time points how the protein localization alters. Now, now let's look at the schematics to understand. Here the green is basically the VSVG GFP. So you can see first they are enriched in the ER. Eventually at around 40 minutes they are enriched in the Golgi and then they diffuse and spread out all over the membrane. So over a period of like uh, three hours, they track the movement of this protein inside the cell. And that happened in a live scenario. And these are three frozen snapshots which can literally tell us the path is basically from ER to Golgi to the membrane. Now there are other ways these days people are using to track these kind of movement. So imagine there is cell and people do live cell imaging, but they also simultaneously label the intracellular organelles with certain dyes or certain kind of proteins which are localized in these cell in these compartments. For example, one can label the ER using a GFP tagged ER resident protein, let's say. So now the ER is labeled in green and let's say the Golgi is labeled in blue and now our protein has a TD tomato tag, so it's in red. So one can track whether these red components are in ER or in the Golgi in time point T1. And also the one can ask where, what happens at time point T2? Where do we see most of these red, pro, red TD tomato tag proteins in the Golgi or in the ER? In this example, one can see at time point T1, it was in ER, time point T2, it moved to Golgi. So these kind of transport can be now tracked using live cell imaging. That's why live cell imaging and microscopy is a really useful tool to track all these intracellular movements. So I hope this video was useful and insightful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, like share and subscribe. You can get more notes and flashcards in our Facebook and Instagram page. So you can solve questions in our website. There are a lot of lot of questions and notes for you to download. You can support our channel using super thanks. See you in next video.